The Linux kernel is modular, which is something that we cover up in the Linux Essentials course, but basically it means that the kernel is like the operating system itself, and you can have just as many modules installed as you need to support your hardware and the stuff that you're doing. Anything else that you don't need isn't part of the running kernel, which makes it efficient and flexible and the same people can use the same base kernel just by plugging in the modules they need. And we don't have to have like a special kernel for every use case. We can put in what we need and pull out what we don't need. Now I have to admit, this was a little bit frustrating for me and I spent a shameful amount of time trying to figure out what on earth was going on. Because if you look, uh, this is the section that we're going over. We're going to call it 1.7.2. And this is how we set kernel configuration stuff. And then these are the tools that we use to insert and remove kernel modules. Again, most of this is done automatically, uh, but we can do it manually. Here's the issue. Let me zoom in a bit. If you look right here, this is a command that I spent so long trying to figure out what it was. I was familiar with LS mod, RM, you know, INS mod, all these other programs and tools for dealing with the kernel, I understood. But IMS mod, I had never heard of. So I'm like, oh, I get to learn something so that I can teach it. It just doesn't exist. From what I can tell, this is just a typo in the Linux Plus objectives. And I wish they would have fixed it because I, like I said, I spent a shameful amount of time, time trying to figure out what exactly IMS mod was. If I'm wrong and it's really a thing and you know, please leave a comment because I would love to teach about it. I just couldn't find any reference to it anywhere. So anyway, I'm going to assume that that was a typo and we're just going to cover the kernel tools that I know about. So before we learn about how to do kernel configuration, I'm going to show you how we can actually look at the kernel and insert and, and remove modules. So I'm going to become root. So su or sudo su dash, you could do sudo dash i for interactive shell. Basically, if we're going to mess with the kernel, we have to have root privilege. So I'm just becoming the root user and then we'll be able to do that. So the first tool I want to show you is ls, not ls. I mean, yeah, there's ls, but that's not what I meant to show you. <laughs> ls mod uh, will give us a list of all the currently inserted or active modules in our current running kernel. Okay, so all of these are modules that are currently running on our system. This is actually my personal system that we're recording on. And like I said, this is done automatically. I didn't set up any of these. This is just detected during uh, startup and it inserts all the modules that it needs based on the hardware that you have. Uh, specifically one that we're gonna play with because it won't break anything in my running system is FireWire. Now FireWire is an older sort of port. You used to have to use FireWire to connect video uh, camcorders to like to get DV video out of. Uh, I have a FireWire card in this computer just because I had it, but it's not something that I'm using. So what I'm going to show you is how you would remove a kernel module from the running kernel. And so we would just say RM mod for remove mod and then the name of the kernel module. So in our case, I'm going to remove FireWire underscore OHCI. All right. So RM mod fire wire underscore O H C I press enter. And now if we do LS mod again, see, remember where that is under FireWire core up here. This is like sub modules that it loaded. Sub modules are going to be important in a second, but anyway, LS mod. And now we'll see that one is gone. Okay. So the, the FireWire O H C I is not installed. Now in order to insert it, like I said, when we re reboot, it's going to insert it anyway, but you, there's two different tools that you can use to insert a module. You can do INS mod, not IMS mod, because that's not a thing, or at least I don't think so. Um, but INS for insert mod and then the module. But there's a problem. You can't just name the module. So I can't just say firewire underscore OHCI. It's going to say, oh, I don't know where that file is. Ah. And so you have to actually have the full path. We can still do it. We just have to have the full path and they usually live in, uh, let's, let's do some quick, uh, find commands pipe through grep. If you've been following along, this shouldn't be too difficult, but we're going to look in the user lib folder. So find user lib and I'm going to grep for firewire. And I forgot the word grep. 
<laughs> grep for Firewire. And we're going to see that, sure enough, here it is. We have Firewire OHCI. This is my currently running kernel. So if we want to do INS mod, we can say INS mod user lib modules 6.1.06 AMD kernel drivers firewire and then firewire ohci.co that was a lot but if we do it this way it will insert the module no error and if we do ls mod look it's it's there it's back and running in fact we can see all of this happening if we type d message this will show us all the things that are happening here is where we removed it with rm mod and then here is what happened when we just ins modded it it added that device and it created fw0 in the dev folder so that's actually what happened when we inserted that module but there is a better way so let's remove that module again so rm mod firewire underscore ohci ls mod make sure it's gone see nothing up my sleeve in fact if we look at d message now it'll show us that, you know, we remove that device. So that device has been removed. Uh, but instead of knowing the entire path, if we use mod probe, and then just the name fire wire underscore OHCI, it's going to insert the module, we can do LS mod, and it's going to show us sure enough, it's it's inserted right there. And if we do D message, we're going to see just like last time it was there added, created a device. The difference is, well, there's some, uh, there's multiple differences. One, we don't need the full path. It looks in the path of our kernel modules, but the thing about mod probe is it will also insert dependency module. So a lot of times, just like a, if you install a package on a system, there might be dependencies that are required. Same thing when you install a kernel module, a kernel module may have dependencies that it needs in order to be properly inserted. INS mod does not do that. It will just insert a module, but mod probe is smarter and it will probe to find out what it depends on and it will install all of the kernel modules that are required in order to make it work. Now, just to complete the list while we're here, uh, we can also do mod info wire wire underscore OHCI. And this will just give us information about the kernel module itself. It's just like you would expect. It's kind of like if you do apt info, it'll give you information on a package. This is going to give us information on this particular kernel module. And it just shows all the all the things here about it. So inserting and removing kernel modules is something you can do. It's not something you normally have to do though. Usually that's done automatically on install. And then when the computer boots up, it detects everything it needs. Mod probe will go through and insert all the pieces that you need to have installed. However, you may need to configure some of the settings for modules that are in your system. And that's where sysctl comes into play. Now, it looks a little bit like systemctl, which is the system D tool that we use for like starting and stopping services, but this is different. It's just sysctl and that handles the the various settings for kernel modules. Now, and there's some cool stuff going on here that we've covered partially before. So maybe this will put a bunch of puzzle pieces together. When you make a change with sysctl, it saves the changes in the proc file system. In real time, you can see the kernel settings in the proc virtual file system, which is cool. Now, if you make a change with sysctl, it will only stay uh, active while the computer is running. If you reboot, it's not going to keep those settings unless you put them in the sysctl.comp file. So let's look at both ways of doing that. And I'll give a, an example of the kind of setting that we might need to change. Okay, if you've ever done something where you have a Linux system running as a router, you know that you need to forward IP packets so it can function as a router, like with two Ethernet ports. Even if you haven't, just know that's one of the kernel settings that you need to set in order for it to act as a router. Now, that setting is stored in, in like on the running system, in the proc virtual file system. It's in proc sys net IP. We're going to do IPv4 specifically IP forward. This is the virtual file that will contain either a one or a zero, either it's on or it's off. Now, if we wanted to change that, we could 
cat the or we could echo the number one into that virtual file and it would change it. We could also change it with the sysctl command. So we could say sysctl, and then the the setting is actually formed a little bit differently. The the setting is formed net dot ip v four dot ip underscore forward equals. We'll change it to one, for example. If we do that, it's going to return that it has changed that setting. Again, in real time, it's just in the active system. I didn't save any files anywhere. It just changed it in the virtual file system. And if we push up arrow to look at this uh, proc file in the virtual file system now, it's changed to one. And so right now our kernel is configured to forward packets and it could act as a router if we set it up and use you know IP tables and all that stuff. But again, this is not saved uh, anywhere that will uh, launch it on boot. If we want to have it saved and f run every time the system is booted and store the setting, we need to change the sysctl.conf file. So let's look at that file. It's in just the etc folder, like almost every other configuration file. And it's sysctl, just like the command, but then .conf. And it's a, it's a configuration file. And if you look, there's a whole bunch of things that it, it, it describes here that you might want to set. One of them happens to be the one that we just changed. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see here, it actually shows us that if we want to be able to enable packet forwarding, we just uncomment net.ipv4.ip underscore forward equals one, which is that setting that we just changed on the command line. So if we wanted to have this run on boot, we would uncomment this. Now, if this wasn't already here, we could just add a line in and like type it in. And if there's other configs you need to make, you can type them in and it will add it when the system reboots, press escape and save this file. And now every time the system boots, it's going to set that. Now we could just reboot the computer to do it, but I'll just show you one more uh, thing. You can actually activate that uh, current like configuration that comp file using the sysctl command too. Let's change it back to zero. Uh, so uh, using sysctl in like real time in our in our running system, uh, we've set it to zero. So if we look at cat proxys, blah, 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 it's gonna be zero. So we, it's not currently forwarding packets, but remember we made the change in sysctl.conf. So if we rebooted, it would be set to one, but we could also do sysctl dash p and that will bring in that configuration file and activate everything in the configuration file. So if you want to do it without rebooting your computer, you can do that. And then if we look, it's set. And every time it reboots, it's going to be set to uh, that because that was in our sysctl.com. So again, it's not terribly uh, common to need to add or remove kernel modules. Sometimes you'll need to do things like that uh, for a particular video device. Like if you don't want it to load a particular kernel driver automatically for your video card, you might have to uh, you know, set something so that it doesn't. Generally though, uh, the system detects all the kernel modules it needs to load and it loads them automatically, usually. However, those configurations, like the, the settings that you may need to change for the kernel stuff, that is something that you more commonly have to do. And that sysctl.com file is where you can make all of those changes permanent. Things like if you wanna change the swappiness of a system or uh, like the IP forwarding, like we said, all of those kernel related settings are generally set in that file. And reboot and they will stick. If you just set them on the command line with sysct with sysctl, it's not going to uh, last if you reboot the computer. You have to have it in that comp file, otherwise it's not going to stick. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. Uh, remember to learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. Uh, this time I'm going to end the video by thanking my Patreon supporters for sticking with me all these months uh, as we try to slog through this Linux Plus course. It's a long course, uh, but it's a lot of fun to learn the stuff along the way too. So anyway, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again to everybody who's supporting me. I'll try to put links in the description if you want to see some of the other stuff I do and some of the other projects we're working on other places. I'll see you in the next video.